Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach, and I am so frustrated right now. Oh my gosh. So yesterday I watched uh, season one, episode 13, and I loved it. It was just fantastic. It was just a pure adventure, the whole thing. Huge budget. Loved every second of it. And then today I watched season two, episode 13, and this, it's the worst kind of bad because it starts good. Like the first 10, 15 minutes are like good, they're tight, they're dramatic. We got big stakes. And then I am not kidding you. And one of the things about these uh, Discovery episodes I like is they vary wildly in length. I've seen them as short as like 37 minutes up to like 50 minutes. Um, this one was like 47, 48, and I am not kidding you. You get like 10, 15 minutes in the movie or into the episode, and it's pretty good. It's pretty solid. Uh, so uh, Leland, who's called Control, and a bunch of Section 31 ships are, are coming to get you. Uh, they try to get rid of the data that Section 31 needs by abandoning Discovery. And then they were going to scuttle it, or no, more than scuttle it, they were going to destroy it. Um, and then they find out they can't because Control, the, the, or no, the, the data from the planetoid won't let itself be destroyed that rhymed by accident, by the way. Um, and uh, so it starts activating the shields to which everyone goes, oh, that's happening because of uh, the data's protecting himself. And then they're like, yeah, that makes sense because of all the other times the data tried to protect itself. And I'm just like, so why do you think this is going to work? I mean, that evacuation scene is kind of cool. They have these like... Uh, uh, gang planks that go from the Discovery to the Enterprise. Enterprise just looks great. They show the bridge. They show everyone in their primary color uh, jackets. Everyone just looks so freaking cool. And not to be crude, but if there were buttons on that Re Rebecca Remains Rebecca <laughs> coat or a little blouse, oh my gosh, those things would be under so much pressure. Wow. So uh, she looks great, by the way. Um, so then what happens is, I'm not kidding you, about 12, 15 minutes in, they stop, and it is 20 minutes of crying, silly Billy humor, and emotional validation. Oh, wait, no, they have a scene with Stamets and Culber that's pretty good. Stamets and Culber are probably the best couple in all of Star Trek in that they seem like people who have an actual relationship based on mutual attraction and feelings but it's complicated and they don't always get along it's just better than like the completely bloodless on off like Riker Troy Riker and Troy literally seem like one of those sitcom things where people go if we're both 50 and we're both single let's get married and they're just like okay whatever and then Troy's relationship with Worf literally seems like duck duck goose or musical chair she's like oh I'll date you it's like okay whatever um but that's a good relationship. It's very compelling. But then they get into... Oh, geez. It's so embarrassing. Because when did I get into Discovery? Like a month and a half ago? And I was so into it. I go, I don't understand why anyone hates Michael Burnham. She's such a good actress. She's so beautiful. I find her storyline very compelling. All she does is cry. She will cry like six times in a in an episode with six different people and six... She'll just go from crying to, and and I, I got to tell you, I know they're trying to do the women in command, women love the science, but except for Jet Reno, who's like a favorite character of mine, it's embarrassing. Like the women will not stop crying, yas queening each other, emotionally validating each other and emotionally validating themselves. Tilly is supposedly dying and she's doing a recording for her mother and she says, I don't know if you're proud of me. But I'm proud of me. It's like, oh, gee, hosts of fat. And then, like, Pike starts talking about, I'm glad I was here to watch you discover your heart. Oh, oh. so bad. So bad. And then, you know, it's very Star Trek. We got to do this, to do the this. But this happens, then we don't have time to do this. But what if we do the this to this? I'm actually fine with that part. That's that's classic Trek, except for uh, what are they doing? They're taking the magic suit that they don't have, but they have the plan. So they make the magic time suit that can do anything. Don't forget the time suit 
has unlimited data storage. They've actually established that. Unlimited data storage and un unlimited power, you know, battery capacity. It's, it's magic. It's beyond what Tony Stark's armor was in Infinity War, where it could literally just do anything and, and generate, like literally generate mass. Um, it's, it's a magic suit and they just build it instantly. Um, and, uh, then like, I'm not, it's 20 minutes of goodbyes and girl, you're a mate. Oh, and they bring Poe. Do you remember Poe from the short trek? Do you remember the worst short trek? The cutesy pie. Oh, you're a girl. I'm a girl. We both love the science. Best friendsies forever. Ice cream is yummy nummies. They bring all of that back except for. It's somehow 10 times worse than it was in the short trek because short trek was just like, it's kind of meta, but it was this cheap way for CBS to get more money out of Netflix. And then <laughs> Netflix was like missing me with that shit. So then uh, CBS is like, Oh, um, but they didn't really do anything. There was like, there were kind of like shaggy dog stories or just like little novellas. They didn't really matter. So, Poe comes in and she's like, ice cream's nummy and I'm smart and I love the science and I'm a queen and girls are my friends. And she's being like cutesy pie. It's very Whedon-esque and it's just so freaking painful. And then everyone's hugging. They're hugging. They're crying. They're hugging. They're saying goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. There's more goodbyes than the last Lord of the Rings movie. And then you know what? They all decide to go together. Yay. We're all friends. He's forever. One of the things I kept thinking is this one word, unearned. You know, when they have 10 endings at the end of the third Lord of the Rings movie, it's because you just went through three, three hour movies and they were really good and they were huge epics and they were based on classics of Western literature. And I know it's just nine hours, but it was over like three years of you watching and it was a big deal. Almost everyone loved those movies. There are major emotional events, Smith's... God, my bladder. I think my bladder still has scars on it. Polyps from just, like, trying to not go to the bathroom for three hours when you're, like, drowning yourself in soda. But it was a big deal. Those, those endings, even if they were, were a little excessive, they were earned because it was giving each person a unique ending and farewell. This is just stupid. There's, like, Pike's taking, like, two minutes out of the script to, like, compliment everyone on the the bridge even the black guy with the beard and the asian guy who basically do nothing even the replacement for ariam who was weirdly enough the actress who played ariam in season one and then another actress played her and then that actress got written out so they put the woman who played ariam in the place of ariam but she's not ariam she's done like nothing nothing she just walked in she oh you're, you're the new person at ariam station She's done nothing. Like, we get a farewell. It's like, you've filled Aram's place. Oh, we, what the hell? What's going on? Like, this is just like this weird, like, Twilight Zone story where everyone hates Discovery. And I'm Mr. Chipper with, like, little cartoon birds floating around my head. And, like, Discovery is amazing. I love it. You people are crazy. And now I'm like, I need a pitchfork. Why doesn't everyone else have a pitchfork? I need one. I have the same hate in my heart. You know what? You know what Star Trek Discovery is? This is what it is. Someone comes up and you're like, hey, what's up? Hi, you look like a cool person. We could be friends. Then they take out a chainsaw and they chop off both of your arms. Then they take your arms and they swing them at your face so that your right hand hits your right cheek, your left hand hits your left cheek. And then they look at you and they go, my, what rosy cheeks you have. This is what I was on your, I was, it was like those Robin Hood movies where he's fighting like 10 of, you know, a sheriff, the sheriff's soldiers. And I'm like, this is a good show. I will defend it. Do, 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 do. And you're, then you're just like, just drop a nuke from orbit on me. Shoot, shoot some photon. I'm defending you with an epee and a foil on those you know, crenellated uh, stone steps in a castle. And then uh, they're, they're like, uh, just teleport 10 photon torpedoes right there. Um, so, yeah. I, I mean, I still like season one. I got two more episodes of that. Uh, I like that 
I want to see what's up with the Klingon war, but this stuff, it's just stupid. <laughs> what are you thinking? Are you thinking? By the way, why is the second season one episode shorter than season one? It's because they don't have that Netflix mo- Was it as announced as a 15 episode season? Yeah, who cares? Get it over with one week earlier. So, anyway, thanks for watching. And I'll have another. Oh, I'm going to do uh, your dad's favorite movie, <laughs> Quigley Down Under. I started watching it today. It's the most dad film ever. I guarantee you, your dad loves this movie. Anyway, so uh, thanks for watching. I'll have a Quigley Down Under review tomorrow. Oh, boy, Amazon Prime Video just put a ton of good new movies. My watch list like doubled. They have all three Blade movies up there now. Yeah, boy, they got the first Underworld in there. I'm excited. Anyway, thanks for watching. Bye.